Hello, hello, hello. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me in Solomon's Temple. My name again is Solomon Izang Ashams. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for joining me here, watching videos after videos. My prayer is that you would be blessed as you watch some of these videos, you know, that we could interact, even if we dis disagree, but, you know, I hope we're going to have a and find uh, areas where there is a lot of um, commonality where we can actually agree and glorify the name of the Lord. That's what we're all about. So thank you so much for joining me. Wherever you're watching, I appreciate you. Please make sure you use the comment section, the box. Comment if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook. Uh, please comment. Tell us where you're watching from. And also interact as we talk about this issue do not forget to subscribe to the youtube channel that is uh, solomon's temple and also you can go onto our website unclesolomon.com there are great content there that you're gonna find very interesting anita udo you were first here this morning good morning to you and good morning to everyone thank you raymond awesome to have you here um all the way from gb great britain uh, thank you, M.A.K., uh, from the Republic of Cameroon. You guys are doing well hosting the Afghan. I hope that, uh, you know, it will bring some sort of peace and also uh, the president <laughs> would, would consider leaving. He's been there for too long. Mwanko, thank you. Uh, watching from India. Awesome. Brian from Lusaka. Uh, I hear him as usual from Abu Dhabi all the way in the United Arab Emirates. Thank you, Evelyn, my sister. Uzwandi Lay, I see you. Uh, Amusu, all the way from Lagos. Uh, awesome to have you here. Awesome to have you here. Also, Helen, Emeke, <laughs> you're laughing. Uh, from London, England, from Australia, that is. Thomas, awesome to have you here, Thomas. So, guys, I just received some news not long ago. It was brought to my attention that there is a bit of a drama and conflict around the, the Suleiman's family. You know, Johnson Suleiman, if you, as you remember very well, there was a, a girl that I brought here from Nigeria who was married to one of Suleiman's brother, and he decided to leave her and go out with another woman, right? And... Suleiman support him. Sorry, uh, not, not Suleiman. I beg your pardon. That's a Ginla. But Suleiman is what we're talking about here. Sorry, I mixed it up. Suleiman has churches, Omega Fire Ministries across the world. And one of the branches is here in Johannesburg. And I remember when his brother, his younger brother, Emmanuel Suleiman, he calls himself Emmanuel Sule, um, came in, I think, about 10 years ago. Uh, the church was in Randbeck. Now they have moved to around Gold Reef City in Johannesburg, South Africa. And he was a lead pastor. So he he has led the church for a while now. Um, and this is him with his wife. This is his brother, Emmanuel Sule, man. He calls himself Emmanuel Sule who happens to be one of his younger brothers. So he's been here, uh, has hosted him several times, have uh, have done quite a lot of stuff. Sometimes I do hear him on radio, the local Christian radio station. Um, and I've never been to Omega Fire Ministries or anything. I've never interacted with them in, in any way. So I don't know much about him, about the church here. And so, by the way, Johnson Suleiman himself is coming down for a, for some event conference next month this month actually ne next week after next week i think the 14th to the 16th he's going to be up in johannesburg so <laughs> let's wait and see let's wait and see uh but this his brother who was the lead pastor with his wife uh i got news that they decided to leave to resign now if you ask me why they resign i cannot give you reasons because i'm still investigating to find out why they resigned but obviously, when you see such a resignation from a family member who's part of a church uh, and also brother and somebody who has invested so much in the church here, you know that 
uh, there is definitely something wrong. Maybe it is due to the reputation that Suleiman has created for himself, <clears throat> you know, in the last three, four, five years uh, of one scandal after another scandal. And you see in South Africa, people would ask questions. People would disassociate yourself from that brand, you know. Unlike Nigeria, where you can trick people, manipulate people, or give people money, and people will still come. It's a different ball game here, you know, because people are becoming aware. So he, he I'm sure he made it, his job difficult for him. He's calling difficult for him, uh, and and obviously you should expect that. You should expect that when when you have a when you have an organization and the leader is is not. The leader's reputation keeps getting hammered and hammered over and over again due to the leader's negligence and mistakes, you know, and choices. Obviously, if you are somebody that wants the best for that institution, then you have to make a choice. And from what I heard, actually, that, that uh, you know, this... Uh, brother of his, that is uh, Emmanuel Suleiman. He he's actually some sort of a a guy who's not really dodgy, you know. Um, but if you're not if you're not really dodgy, you cannot. If if you work with Suleiman, with Johnson Suleiman, fact is you're gonna become dodgy. So you, because you you would know the kind of life that he lives, the kind of immoral life that he lives, right? So, but they're saying he seems to be like a nice guy and all that. Maybe that's why he he made the decision to leave. But another reason why I think he made the decision to leave is because he is very passionate about. He's written a couple of books on leadership and and uh, and success and all that. So he's more like a, a coach, a business coach, personal coach, marriage coach, with his wife. So this is him. <clears throat> you know, he's called himself Sule Emmanuel, <clears throat> whichever way. Uh so he he definitely is somebody that loves to empower people or he has a very strong calling to empower people to coach people and he's always been around the the work that he's been doing in Johannesburg it's very visible people could see it you could see that his passion is much into that his passion is not into all the theatrics that we see Johnson Suleiman do his passion is not so into all this deliverance and all the miracle money gimmicks that we hear and see Suleiman and you know Johnson Suleiman do you know uh so maybe you know for him it's like no you know I don't want to go that way I don't want to go that way at all you know uh it is it is important for for him to to choose where he wants to go to and again you know, you would be, you would be very, you must be a deceptor to associate yourself with Johnson Suleiman. You must be a crook to associate yourself with him, you know, because his ways are shady. You must be a person of very questionable uh, character. You must be someone who doesn't really know his destiny. I think his brother probably, his destiny lies elsewhere. Or he's just like, hey, because of your choices on your reputation, one scandal after another scandal, uh, the church isn't growing. You know, we we are not really, people are not accepting, are not open to accept Omega Fire Ministries just because of, you know, some of the scandal that you're in the news, you know, every quarter, every three months, you're in the news and and and, and all that. So if you go to the church's website or if you go to the church's Facebook, social media platforms and all that, you would find out that they have a new pastor. In the last couple of months, they brought in a guy called Pastor Paul with his wife. Pastor Paul with his wife. It looks like they actually, you know, imported him from Nigeria to head the church, obviously, to toe the line and and do whatever Johnson Suleiman is uh is uh, asking him uh, to do. Uh, it's it's important for us, and I I heard that you know the style that Suleiman has when there's some of the churches that he has planted, like in places like Italy or across Europe and France, 
and in New York and all that. Even the church in New York, the church in New York, you know, a lot went into it by very faithful people. There's a lady in particular who really invested her time and 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 resources towards it. But still, her work was not appreciated. Everything was taken away from her, the monies and all that kind of stuff. And, and she was treated so, so bad. So maybe that's his own way. That's Johnson Suleiman's way of, of pushing. That's why he would come to Nigeria and you see him with a lot of money because he would go here, maybe get a $10,000 and you go there, maybe get a $10,000. And when you come to Nigeria and you change that into Naira, obviously, and you, are, you got people giving him so much money also. And all. It, sometimes you, you have to understand that some of these preachers and charlatans and pastors that you hear them brag about how much they're worth and what they've bought and all that and, and all they've bought, the financial uh, power. Don't believe them. Sometimes they hype it up. So they, they're like marketers, you know what I'm saying? They want you to buy into the product because they're not really coming to you and really telling you about the real Jesus. They're just selling the product to you. You know, it's a product they create. You know, the benefit of that product, the profit of that product is not eternal life. It's for them, financial, you know. So you have to go and check it out, you know, go and check it out um, and and see and see and see how how, how it's going. Uh, but there's quite a lot that's been happening and it's quite a lot that you would see and you would ask yourself. And sometimes you have all these churches that has become almost like family business. You know, it's, it's totally something else, isn't it? Uh, so you ask yourself, is this the right thing? Is that what should be done? Uh, you know, and, uh, and 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 uh and 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 all that kind of stuff so we got a comment from tembi saying i know the pastor very well i was in that church from eastern cape i then attended johannesburg Randbeck. it was okay under pastor emma and the wife but i think emma is tired of johnson yeah uh it looks like it you know um, and Imana Thi says, these false prophets are, and etc. are the poison to innocent people. What if we catch them and we beat them hard and harder and harder? <laughs> we can't beat them. We'll be taking the laws into our hands. We don't do that, right? <laughs> we don't do that. Uh, so we, 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 you have to know that when you're under a leadership, of a church, you have to hold the leadership of the church accountable, the pastor, the prophet, the apostle accountable. And if they're not towing the line biblically, you have to make a choice to depart, to leave. You cannot associate yourself with that. Once you keep associating yourself with that, it's obvious that you're going to get tarnished or you're going to be, be, you know, you're going to begin to become like them, you know? And yeah, and it's, uh, and it's important. You have to make a choice. Does your destiny lie here? Whatever the threats, whatever the curses, whatever the insecurity that you think, ah, if I live here, where else? Whatever the doubt, take a leap of faith. Disengage yourself. Move on. Because with all the scandal that Suleiman is involved in now, there's quite a lot on online right now uh you know it is obvious that soon you know his empire is going to crash or his empire is going to become irrelevant there are some empires that do not crash totally and disappear some of these empires you know build by charlatans and, fal and false prophets they will be the child the, the the empire will be there but you can only see the structures they would only speak about their glory days, but their relevancy, their importance is gone because God has left long time ago, even before people noticed.
God is not in their lives and God is not in that building at all. So it is important for us to, uh, to, to, to know that. So just wanted to share that with you. You can go and check it out yourself uh, and, and see, see what's up online and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you. And please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Shalom.